lesson, we are going to be learning more about Latin prepositions. In lesson one of this chapter, we learned that when you want to use a preposition in Latin, it must be followed by a noun in the accusative or the ablative case. When you see a preposition on a vocabulary list, you will learn from the entry what case must follow that preposition. Take a look at this vocabulary list that we have here. We have in plus the ablative case, in plus the accusative case, sinna and cum plus the ablative case, propter plus accusative, trans plus accusative, de plus the ablative, and kirkum plus the accusative. So there are two things that we learn as we look at this vocabulary list. First of all, if you see this plus ablative or plus accusative after one of the words on the vocabulary list, you know you've found a preposition. You also learn from the plus ablative or plus accusative what case the noun that follows the preposition must be written in. Every noun, pardon me, every preposition has to be followed by a noun. That noun has to be written in a specific case, ablative or accusative, and which one is dependent upon what we're told on the vocabulary list. So sinna, which means without, has to be followed by a noun in the ablative case. Propter, which means because of, has to be followed by a noun in the accusative case. That's what that means. Now, if you don't want to always rely on the vocabulary list, you should take some time to learn what the prepositions mean and what case follows them. The simplest way to remember what case the prepositions take is to learn about Sid Space. He's the ablative astronaut. Let me introduce you to him. Sid Space is the brother of Roy G. Biv. You remember him. The colors of the rainbow, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Well, Sid Space are all of the Latin prepositions that we're going to learn that must be followed by nouns in the ablative case. Sinna, in, de, sub, pro, ob, cum, and ex. Those eight prepositions must be followed by a noun written in the ablative case. If it's not one of those eight, then the noun that comes after the preposition has to be in the accusative case. I'm going to set you up with two sets of flashcards to help you practice learning what the prepositions mean and also to help you practice remembering which prepositions are followed by the ablative case and which are followed by the accusative case. For one of the sets, you are going to be completing the write activity, and for the other, you're going to be completing the learn activity. You will need to take a photo of your results for both the write and the learn activity and submit them as answers to the quiz that follows this lesson.